Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you three DIYs with a vintage farmhouse look. Stay tuned. All right, so DIY number one, I'm going to take these three bottles that I thrifted and I thought they were super cool. They have that vintage look to them and i wasn't sure if i wanted to do anything with them i actually got several so there's more that came with the with when i purchased it but i'm going to use just three for this particular diy and i'm going to use a combination of a top coat by rustoleum this is a matte uh, kind of like top coat for their chalked line and then I'm um, just going to give it a good spray This will make it very opaque So it'll make the glass instead of clear be a little bit more opaque again I'm trying to reach of a, vi a vintage kind of look So um, then I decided to take white flat paint and just kind of spritz it on so basically just kind of Make it look like it was all white at some point, but it kind of has been uh, distressing or fading over the years. That's the kind of look I'm looking for. And that's why I used both sprays. And this is kind of what I ended up with, which I really liked. So now I'm going to add a little bit more antiquing to it. And I'm going to use my stenciling brush or foam brush and Waverly's antiquing wax. And I'm just going to focus on edges and details of each bottle and then um, dab and wipe as needed with a dirty rag. So this is kind of what they're looking like. I'm really digging it. I really love the way they're turning out. They just look, again, like they've faded through the years and also gotten a little grungy, a little dirty. So I really like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of detail. Again, I love the farmhouse look. So I'm going to take this piece of strand from a rope that I used on a previous project and I had it left over. Basically, is the Dollar Tree nautical rope. And I normally separate the strands and then you get these kind of strands that look like just have a ton of jute twine on it. For this particular bottle, I'm just going to crisscross it there in the front. And then I'm going to add uh, some little flowers there. I didn't put that on the clip here, but I did add some cute little flowers right where the rope met. And this is how I do it. I just basically cut pieces of rope and it just makes the rope go a long way. Um, and I remove or separate the strands and then you have three different strands with a whole ton of jute twine on it. Well, I don't care cause right now I feel the love that we said we would burn. Oh, I know that you feel it too. I know that I told you
I wanted all three bottles to look like they're part of a set, like they belong together. That's why I wanted to add the jute twine to all of them, but in different spots. So it's just nice and um, just random, I guess. And that's what they look like. I think they look stunning. I love, love, love the way they turned out. Hey guys, so I want to tell you about my friend Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. This video is in collaboration with her. She is amazing, guys. If you don't know her, you need to. Take a look at her channel. I have her link down below in the description box. Her channel is filled with tons of inspiration. She's so, so talented and you're just going to love her. So do me a favor, take a visit into her channel and show her some love. All right, DIY number two, guys. This one is actually, oh, it's hard to say if it's my favorite, but it's it's definitely up there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this Dollar Tree mason jar sign. Um, it's mason jar style, I guess. Um, it's beautiful. It's just not my style. So I want to recreate some or create something very different with it. So I'm going to hand draw here just like the outline of the jar but basically leaving about two inches on each side. And I'm just doing it with a pencil because that's just, you know, it's simple. And then I'm gonna trace it with using my knife blade. And this took a little longer, so I'm just gonna show you the first few seconds of how it looked and what I did. Basically, I just kept tracing it, tracing it, cutting through, cutting through until the knife blade went all the way through and I was able to pull out the middle part. And then once I had it out, I sanded down the leftover little uh, glitter parts that I see there in the corner. And then I sanded the inside uh, trim that way it's nice and smooth. Now that everything is smooth and ready for paint, I'm gonna give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. Thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter. Nothing matters, so I cry instead. And while the paint dries, I'm going to use this chicken wire. I got this chicken wire at the or at Am on Amazon, <laughs> and it's different from what chicken wire you would get. Uh, at the hardware store I have worked with that one and it is a lot <laughs> more difficult to work with this is a lot more manageable it's softer it's more of a crafting chicken wire than anything else I took that middle part that I removed and I'm going to use that as a template and I'm just going to draw with a permanent marker about an inch away from the rim there so that way I know um, that it'll fit in that middle part and have enough on the outside so that I can secure it to the mason jar sign Hey guys so i am going to again mix two different things this one is more like a terracotta um, look and this one has more of a like a hammered i don't know kind of rusty look so i'm gonna try to mix it splash it here and there to make it a little bit more vintage I've been 
I think this orange tone or terracotta tone gave it a beautiful rustic, not rustic, rusty look. It just looks like it's rusted. And then I sprayed a little bit more of the darker tone on top just to mute it down a bit. And I think it turned out so cute. Now in the camera, you really can't tell. It just looks like it's dark. But later in the pictures, you'll see it a little bit closer and you'll see what I'm talking about. It just looks like that chicken wire has... Um, has rusted through the through the months and the years. I'm gonna take these scrap pieces of painter sticks that um, I got from a different project. I always keep these little things around and for purposes like these. And I'm just gonna use them to secure the chicken wire in the back. So because the chicken wire had that rustic, rusty look, I wanted to add a little bit on the edges of the frame. That way it kind of looks and ties in with the vintage farmhouse look that I'm going for. And I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to take this Dollar Tree lace ribbon and I'm just going to trim or not trim, place it in between where that trim, the upper trim and the, the bottom part of the sign kind of meet and just hot glue it on the back. And then I'm going to add a simple flower to the right lower corner of this sign. And I'm going to leave it like that. I did put back the little jute twine string on top so that it can be hung but that's it. I'm not going to do anything else. I want to keep it very simple, but I think this just speaks vintage farmhouse and it looks so pretty. All right, guys, so DIY number three, here we are with this beautiful frame I recently got from a family member who did not need it anymore. It didn't even have a glass or anything. She, It was just like this. So I want to give it more of a farmhouse look. I'm going to give it one and a half coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. And what I mean by one and a half is I am going to give it kind of a ombre style look. So... The middle rim, so all that middle rim that I'm painting right now, it's all going to have full coverage. And then I'm going to slowly increase the dry brushing as I go out on the frame. That way it just starts kind of like it used to be all white, like the center rim. And then it kind of has the stress through the years. And that's kind of like the look that I am going for with this one. So I gave it one coat and then a second coat was only on the again inside rim part because i wanted that to have full coverage everything else around it was dry brushed to give it that distressed vintage look All right, so now I'm going to take some uh, rope. This is not nautical rope from the uh, from Dr our Dollar Tree. It's uh, something I got on Amazon. I do have it on my Amazon store, which is linked down below. A lot of the supplies, paint, paintbrushes, florals that I use, I do have in my Amazon store. So check it out in the link 
down below. So I'm going to use uh, this rope to tie it around this little milk jug that I got several months ago now. Oh gosh, oh, probably almost a year now. And there's like a ton in this box and I use some here and there for my DIYs. I'm just going to put a floor here, but I will secure it with some hot glue. That way it's nice and secure. And we're just about done guys. I'm just going to secure here the other side using staples and then we'll be done. And this one is stunning. It's so regal looking. I just love the way that ombre distressed look looks on this piece. It's beautiful. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I'm so thankful that you take the time to watch. If you're visiting for the first time, I ask that you consider subscribing and joining our YouTube family. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I so appreciate your support. And guys, don't forget to um, uh, check out my um, Instagram. I want to tell you guys about that. If you have not connected with me on Instagram, check out the link down below. I love to connect with you there as well, as well as my new channel, Beauty on Purpose at Home. All right, guys, have a blessed day.